first single came out in 92 and uh, I, I didn't really know anything about the music industry at all and it was really just me and my guitar at this point and I would just do any support shows or tours, I would just anything, the drop of a hat, I'd just go off and do it. It was like a, the, the world of dance music was still very strong in the UK anyway and Nirvana was coming through and the sort of grunge thing. Brit pop was rearing its ridiculous, ugly head. Uh, it was like, how on earth was my music ever going to get anywhere? Um, I don't think anyone really believed it would. So it was like, I think acoustic guitar playing was about as out of vogue as you could get at that moment in time. My first couple of videos got played a lot in Ireland and a sort of cult success began there. The Irish seemed much more open to what I was doing because I think acoustic music and, and lyrics are important there. Throughout all the chaos of the early years of some really futile, soul-destroying tours, I had Ireland to go back to all the time and um, a fantastic reception and the things would be building and the shows would be getting bigger and I was developing as a musician over there and, um, and, and as a performer too. But really all that the early years did was confuse me because I think you've got all people like your agent, your manager, the record company, everyone's telling you what you should be doing or what's not working or what, you, it's like you need to write some sort of hit single and it's like, what, what? you know, like, I'm just doing my thing, you know. I basically sort of said goodbye to everyone for a while, managers and agents, and just sort of went and stood on my own two feet. And I just sort of got down to making music at home with a little home studio and seeing if I could find a way in myself. I've always found the studio a bit of a threatening environment. It's full of people who seem to know what they're doing. And I didn't know what I knew how to do if you sing some songs and strum a guitar. It's like, so it, it's like, when I took the law into my own hands in that way, it was a, of an important moment. record at home and no one wanted to put it out and uh, we put it out in Ireland which seems like the obvious place and White Ladder just grew and a word of mouth thing began to grow and we thought we might lose the few thousand fans we had because it, it sounded so completely different to anything I'd done before. Please forgive me, I had like a house bass on it and a sort of you know, jungle beat. <laughs> we just thought we were going to lose the Irish, you know. But what actually happened was we got everybody. It was. It was, uh, it was, and it was a magic time. We, at a certain point, we could sense that we'd made. We didn't know what we had, but we just knew we were proud of it, and we'd taken care of every tiny bit of it as much as we could, with love. We made every hi hat beat, every bass drum, every strum, every word. We just made a record that we felt went from the, the very first note to the very last as just one continuous thing, as a as a flow.